What's up everyone, it's Ahmed here and today we'll be diving into how to build a voice AI agent but this time it will be powered by OpenAI's real-time API and this allows for more realistic and natural sounding conversations but that's not all. I've gone a step further and also integrated features such as customer history, write capabilities and streaming so we can have quick responses and also this one agent is able to handle multi-location appointments. Trust me, you would want to stick around for this one because I'll be breaking down the tech stack behind it and show you exactly how it works. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, hi my name is Ahmed, I have a few years of experience in machine learning and generative AI engineering and I previously worked at Rolls Royce and I'll build and share practical AI solutions that business owners can actually use. I've also just launched my school community where you'll find more in-depth tutorials, full code and templates as well as Q&A and tech support sessions. It'll be the first link down in the description below. So what's the problem that we're trying to solve here? Well if you saw my recent video it had over 19,000 views and thank you all. This led to a lot of calls with different clients and they all wanted voice AI agents. However, their main concern was the time delay and they wanted the agent to sound a bit more natural and realistic. On top of that, they wanted the agent to handle complex calendar appointments across multiple locations. And the solution that I'll be sharing with you guys today will be able to handle all of these concerns. Right then, so I've got this diagram here to illustrate how everything's connecting together. So we're making use of Trulio, Replit and NA10 for the main sort of components. However, we also have the OpenAI's real-time API and Pinecone Assistant for the right component. So first we start with the inbound call that goes into Twilio. That then gets forwarded to our first endpoint. The incoming call endpoint basically does two things. One, it gets the chat history. So it goes to NA10 and we grab the chat history from a Google Sheet to let the agent know what the first message is. If there's no chat history, then it'll just be like a normal standard message. The second thing is that it lets Twilio know which endpoint to use for the media stream. So the media stream endpoint is the bulk of this code where it handles the OpenAI integration, the Pinecon integration, and also the NA10 webhooks. Everything basically happens inside of here. So we get the call cool audio via Twilio into the media stream that goes directly to OpenAI's real-time API. So we're not using uh, text-to-speech or speech-to-text here. It goes directly to the speech-to-speech -speech model. And then depending on what the query is, it gets directed to the different endpoints. So for example, if the user asks the question, um, that will get directed to the Pinecoin assistant where we have a knowledge base of the company's details. So going back to NA10, we have the three different functionalities. We get the chat history. This is for the incoming call. We store the transcript and a summary at the end of the call. This comes from the media stream. And finally, we've got the book appointment tool, which handles all the different appointments between the different calendars. One thing I'd like to advise you guys is actually check out the documentation in uh, OpenAI's platform. And it actually has everything that you need and how to actually integrate Twilio. It's all in there. For those of you that are wondering why I'm using code and the no code platform, into one system, essentially because we can handle all the heavy lifting inside the Python Fast API script and all the integrations for OpenAI's and Pinecone. However, NA10 is really good and fast when it comes to integrations between the different calendars and CRM. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. We can just really quickly spin things up in NA10 and connect it to the custom code. This way we're building a solution that's customizable and very easy to scale. Um, so let's dive into the code and see what that looks like. Right then, so here's the code. I've decided to do this in Replit because it allows for very fast deployment. They also have a Replit AI which works in a similar way to Cursor. Right then, so let's get into it. I've got the different API keys stored as the secrets. So we need OpenAI's API key. We've got NA10's webhook URL, um, Pinecone API key, and also we need to store the Replit's public URL, which I'll show you where we use that as well. So at the top here, we're just setting the different variables. Um, I've used Shimmer for the voice. So there's three different voices for OpenAI's real-time API. Um, and Shimmer I just found is really good. Going down, so we have the incoming call. This is where it does all the different configurations. So we set a first message here as just a standard message. And then we also send a request to NA10 to retrieve the conversation history if there is a, an existing one. So what we, how I'm doing it is we have three different variables that we send to the NA10 webhook. Um, we have the route, um, the number, and then the payload. Um, essentially what's happening here, this is the workflow for NA10. As soon as the request comes in, we've got this switch here. And we, what we're basically saying, if the route is one, two or three, we go down different paths. So the first route goes and checks a Google sheet. So we have a Google sheet, a very simple one, where it has the phone number, the name, transcript of the call, and then the summary. So we're using a phone number as the ID for the different customers. So here we're basically just checking if that phone number has an existing call history. Um, so it does a search. And if there is, we grab the transcript and a summary. So we come back here and this is where we set the first message. I see a lot of people here use a chat completion, open AI or Claude model to do the first message, but to reduce the token usage, we can easily just do this via a JavaScript node here. And then we send our response back to 
the replit. And then the replit goes and sends the stream URL. So this is where we're using the replit public URL. So we change that URL to point to the media stream endpoint and we pass that to the payload that we send back to Twilio. So we have the stream URL, the first message that we got from NA10 or the standard message and then the caller number. So next we want to look at the media stream and there's a lot of things that are going on here but the main thing we just want to focus on today is the this is where we do the functions. So we have the question and answer uh, function and this basically answers the customer questions. Here I've added just especially about AI employees for the sake of the demo later on. And we also have the schedule meeting. So for the schedule meeting, we've got a few different properties that we need to capture for this workflow to work. So we have the name, the email, the purpose of the meeting, the data time, and also the location. Right, so this is where we handle the function calls. So the first function is that if the function name is question and answer, this is where we initialize the Pinecone assistant and then we retrieve the message and send that to the assistant to retrieve the answer. And then here we're also streaming the chunks of the response so that we don't have to wait until the whole response is created before we relay that information to the user. And to quickly sort of show you guys, um, this can be easily done in uh, Pinecone. So you just go to assistant, you create a new assistant. I've added this PDF, which has some information about AI employees. It was actually a carousel that I put on LinkedIn, but for the sake of the demo, this is the assistant. All you have to do is just create a new assistant, add in your knowledge, and then via the API, you'll be able to interact with it. And then once we retrieve the different chunks as they come in, we stream the response to real-time API assistant. And then we have the second function, the schedule meeting function. Um, and this is where we grab all the different parameters. I've got a dictionary here. I don't want to show it because it has my emails. So for each location, we're saying we have a different calendar ID and that's how we distinguish between the different uh, locations essentially. And then in a similar fashion, we send out to NA10 via a webhook again, but this time the route is number three. Um, the payload again is the phone number and then we have the data here as a JSON file that goes to the endpoint. So if it's number three, we come down here, we extract all the different variables, we format the date and time and then we check the calendar availability. And then depending on that, if it's, if it's available, we create the event and then respond with a confirmation. And if it's not available, this is the cool part. We have an agent here that has access to a tool that I've created. Basically, it checks the availability for the calendar given and then it comes back and creates a message to pass on to the agent to let the user know these are the available dates and times. Does that work for you? Right, so let's actually test it out. So we have to run it here. And one thing I forgot to mention for the replit public URL, you grab this from, from top here. So we copy the link here. We have to put this into Twilio. So you go to your phone number, your configurations, and then under URL, this is where we paste the URL of the replit. So this is how it knows where to direct the call to and how to interact with the backend. So yeah, we can see that the Twilio media stream is running. We can actually give it a go. Right, so let's actually see an action. I'm gonna give him a call and put it on loudspeaker. Hey there, this is Sarah from AgentX AI. How can I help you today? Hi Sarah, can I please make a booking for tomorrow? Of course, let's get started. Can I have your name, please? My name is John Snow. Thanks, John. Could you also provide your email address? Uh, my email is john at snow.com. Great. Thank you. What's the purpose of the meeting you'd like to schedule? I would like to have a chit chat in person about AI. Got it. An in-person chat about AI. Do you have a preferred time for tomorrow? With 5 p.m. work with you guys. We have locations in London, Manchester, and Brighton. Which one would you prefer? Can I please make it for London? Your appointment is confirmed for October 23rd, 2024 at 9 a.m. in our London office. Amazing. Look forward to seeing you, John. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take Bye. care, John. Bye. Have a Shush. Okay, so as you can see, I don't know why I told it to shush. Um, it, re it worked. So we have the confirmation here. It went through, checked the calendar, saw that it was available, um, and then responded with a confirmation. So let's test it out where the slot is taken. Hey, John Snow. This is Sarah from Agenix AI. Last time we chatted, we were talking about your in-person meeting on AI for October 23rd at 9 a.m. in London. Did you want to go ahead with that, or is there something new? Yes, can I please make that same booking for tomorrow again? It seems that the proposed time for tomorrow was not available. However, I can offer you some alternative times. One, 
October 24th, 2024, from 1530 to 60 minutes. Two, October 24th, 2024. Can I please go with number two, please? Great, John. I've scheduled your in-person meeting on AI for October 24th at 4.30 p.m. in London. Amazing. If Thank you, you very much. So you can see that it has multiple things there. We saw the latency was really good and also how we're able to interrupt it and talk over it. So it stops talking and then listens to us. We also saw that when I picked up, it said, hi, John. So that was the first message. So he knew the phone number. He knew that we have a previous call history and he adjusted the first message to match. And there you have it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. If you want access to everything I've spoken about here today from the code and the templates and everything, please go and join my school community. Everything's gonna be in there. We've got a bunch of people in there already, and I promise you, you will not regret it. And lastly, these videos take a really long time to make and build and present in a digestible way so you everyone can understand. So I'd really appreciate and like and subscribe so that I know that you guys are actually enjoying this and seeing the value. And with that being said, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.